the, the Chile is actually uh, a true story um, or based on a true story. Uh, when I was a little girl, we lived in a big old house. I'm going to show you a picture of the house in a minute. We lived in a big old house and I have three brothers and sisters. So there's four of us all together. And our little sister, Kate, her bedroom was right up the top of the house, up in the attic. So to get up to her little bedroom, you had to walk up the stairs and then along the corridor. And then there was a little step up to her room, which was literally in the roof of the house, like a little cubby, cubby up there, really. And this step that you stepped onto to get up into Kate's room was a wooden step. And every, we all thought that this step was attached to the floor and it was attached to the back of the wall that you couldn't move it. But only Kate, who was about four or five at the time, knew that you could move this step, that it wasn't attached, that you could move it back. And it was also hollow. So Kate used to move the step back and she used to put against the wall there all her special treasures. And then she'd push the step back again and that inside that step, would be a hiding place for all Kate's special things. Some of the things she put in there were her bubble gum, because our brother always used to take our bubble gum. Um, she had uh, a little shell that she had found at the beach and was very special to her. You might have some special things too, that um, just little things that are like little treasures for you that you might have want to share with anyone or even show anyone else. Um, and Kate also had she had some swap cards, which you might like to ask your mum and dad what swap cards are. They were playing cards that um, back in the 1970s, kids used to swap at school. And Kate had uh, four little wooden dolls. She had little wooden dolls as well, and she put them in this, this step. So the step was her special hiding place. Anyway, our old house was pretty old and pretty, it wasn't beautifully renovated or anything. It was sort of falling down a bit. And one day my mum and dad decided they were going to fix up our old house. So they had painters come and painters painted all the inside of the house. So all the walls looked beautiful and fresh and new. And one day we came home from school and there was new carpet all throughout our house. Mum and dad had got people to come in and put new carpet in the house. And Kate ran up the stairs and do you know what had happened to her wooden step? The people had put the carpet all over it. It was covered in carpet on the top and on the sides. So there was no way Kate could move that step anymore. It was totally covered in the carpet. So her treasures were trapped and she couldn't reach them. And you know, Kate never told anybody about that until she was grown up and an adult and, and, and a mum herself. She only told me about it a few years ago. And a few years ago, we went and saw our old house again. You might know that sometimes if a house is for sale, uh, people can come and have a look at it. And we don't live there anymore, but we were allowed to go and have a look at it because it was for sale. So Kate and I went and had a look. And we, we, it's the same carpet in that house still. And we stood on that step. And Kate said to me, my treasures are still in there. They're still there. So she never got the treasures out of the step. And I thought when Kate told me this story, I thought it was such a wonderful story. And um, it really captured my imagination. So I said to her, would you mind if I wrote that story as a book? And Kate said, no, you can do that. So that's how the story came about. I'm just going to show you now a couple of pictures of Kate and of our old house. So here we go. I'm just going to share the screen with you. And so here, this is a picture of Kate. Um, she was about the, about the age there when, uh, when she would have had the treasures in the step. And then on the other side of the screen is Kate now in the green, green top there with her daughter, Lulu, and my daughter, Lizzie. So that's Kate when she was a little girl and Kate now. Now I'm going to show you, this was our old house. It looks very nice now. It's all done up and spick and span, but it didn't really look like that when we lived in it. Um, and Kate's bedroom, you can't see it there, but it's round the side. If you look at the right-hand side of the screen where the three windows are, if you went sort of round the side of the house there, you could, that's where Kate's little bedroom was, up in that part of the roof. So uh, that's, that's what the house looked like. And this is probably too small for people to see, but this is actually a floor plan of the house. And you can see up in the corner, oh, it's very hard to see, but you can see a, a passageway and then there's a little step and it says up 
and that was up into, it says, study retreat. That was Kate's bedroom. So that's the story behind the story of Tilly. Um, so I'm going to just click that now. So uh, that's a little bit of background to the story of Tilly. Now Anna's going to tell you a little bit about how we made the book. When I first read Tilly, when Janie gave, first gave me the words to read, it was such a, a special story. And there's something about, I feel it was a quiet story, something about quiet stories, which I find really appealing. And the story of Tilly having her own special treasures. So I thought I'd show you when I first get a story, I'm gonna show you some of the process I go through. <laughs> if I can. Anna and I are experimenting with this technology, aren't we, Anna? <laughs> oh, is that working? It looks yes. beautiful. So, when I first read the words and um, have start having a think about the story, Janie and I have lots of meetings and lots of discussions about uh, what we what the story is about and our response. Um, and then I begin working on rafts. I enjoy working in traditional mediums in the beginning, so ink and paint and pencil and watercolour. And then I start working on the characters and what they what they might look like and I suppose how they respond and how they move throughout the scenes. So th these are some of the early pencil sketches which are then scanned into the computer um, and I'll create a storyboard or a layout. So one page might go through, oh, seven rounds of drawings or, or maybe less or maybe more depending on how, um, whether, whether we think it's working or not. So these are some of the, some of the steps or some of the stages. And a lot of the work is not done so much at home. I, usually I have a beautiful studio. I'm working from home at the moment, but this is my studio, which I share with other uh, book illustrators and designers, which is fantastic because I get wonderful feedback from them about what they think if I'm having trouble with something, um, they give really great advice. And these are some of the early sketches or quick paintings of Tilly done in gouache, of um, what she might look like. And so that little outfit on the left is the dress I thought that she would wear, like a little pinafore. And he's just testing out some colors, making sure hopefully that the skin tone is fairly consistent and I was excited to work on Tilly as a character with her beautiful long black hair just like Janie's beautiful long black hair <laughs> and so these are some of the pencils that had had a good workout and that's some of the hair um, her really she's got actually quite fine wispy hair but long and it helped express some of her movement even though she's um, probably quite quiet in relation to her siblings is yes. that how you describe her Janie yes definitely She's, yeah yeah and I used a bit of collage as well so as well as the watercolor some of those pieces is, is stuck on to that to that piece of watercolor like the drawing of the bird has been um, um, pasted down so to um, just to give you an example this is one one spread this is the early um, the early phase of one of the spreads just we're working out how and that's a double page spread so if you imagine the gutter of the uh, page in the middle and then making sure i'm making room for allowing for the space for the text and sometimes i'll block in um, a bit of color and realizing everything perhaps looks too gray at this point but this is rough blocking in of color and then each book I tend to uh, create a little bit differently, but this one, I used a lot of watercolour and decided to paint the pieces separately, which might seem like an easy way of doing it, but in actual fact, it made it quite complex towards the end. So 
all of these tiny paintings made up one spread. So there's, you can see quite a few paintings in this one picture and then they're all scanned in and cut out and then they're placed together in layers in Photoshop in the last scene. But while, while I've, I was working on these paintings, I also experimented with a different way of treating the background. And for that, I use monoprinting. Monoprinting is when you use a special ink or paint, or it doesn't have to be that special, but paint onto perspex and then, or some kind of plastic, and then press the piece of paper and rub it down over the top of it. And then when you peel it back, you have a texture just like this. So I use those textures, and I think I did about oh, 40 of them for the various textures in the night and the walls. So you can see this is the creating the walls for that first lounge room scene. And that very pale version is colouring it. So then when it's all put together, you can see all the pieces. So it's almost, the way I saw it is almost like playing with a doll's house where I have the house and then I can place all the tiny bits and pieces inside. And there's the final spread with the text as well. So you can see it's cropped a bit. This was one of my favourite scenes. And when I first read the story of Tilly, it was this scene that I, um, I suppose impacted me the most. I love that uh, feeling of Tilly so small in the world and reaching out her hand into the um, darkness with the moonlight. And this was another favourite spread as well. I really enjoy trying to capture those, uh, was it not emotional moments, but intimate moments, I suppose. And especially children and with their family. So you can see Tilly on the right watching her brothers and sisters, kind of wishing that she was playing too, but fascinated by what they're doing. So they're just a few details. And another part, I think Janie and I both enjoy visiting, this is us at Squishy Mini for when we visited with Gogo and the Silver Shoes. But normally when it's not um, the time of Corona, we really enjoy visiting bookshops and um, um, yeah, speaking to families. And we've developed a few activities for Tilly. And this is one of them where you could make your own treasure box and I've made one here um, out of cardboard and then collected a few things that I loved from the garden and around the streets near our house. Your own little treasures there. Yeah, I'm gonna say, um, stop here. Now we're gonna go back to both of us. I if think. I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, okay. oh yeah, so now if you just, uh, yeah, oh, well, Anna and I are learning lots about Zoom and recording Zoom and everything, but we hope that you've enjoyed that little journey into the background of Tilly and how we made the book. And you might see that it, um, some people are very surprised to learn that it takes often a year or more than a year to make a picture book. And all those stages that Anna showed you, you can see that so much work and thought is go goes into every illustration that she does. I'm very grateful that um, I get to work with a fabulous illustrator like you, Anna Walker. <laughs> um, so we hope you enjoy Tilly. Some other things you might like to do as well as making the treasure boxes, you might like to talk to mum and dad about what treasures they had when they were, when they were small. Um, you could also make a time capsule because that's sort of what Kate's um, treasures in the step are, aren't they? They're like a time capsule and maybe one day someone will dig up, you know, pull up that carpet and they'll find them. The bubble gum would be a bit revolting now, I think wouldn't it? Um, or you could also um, have a think too, because Kate really, she, she lost her treasures. She never, she never got them back, did she? But um, so you could also think a little bit or, or talk to mum and dad too about maybe something that, that you might've lost that, that you uh, can't get back and that how you hold that special thing in your heart, how we remember things that we have lost.